Too many people have come to me and said, if you can't help me, I don't know what I'm going to do. When we do help them and they come back to us and say, you know, you've, you've changed my life. You saved my life. I haven't felt this good in 30 years. I've never felt this good. These are the things that make me feel fulfilled. So when you say to me, what do I want to leave behind in 2024? Nothing. You know, I want to bring everything forward. Hey, everybody, Jeff here. Before we get started, if you're getting value from the podcast, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For those of you listening on podcast apps, don't forget to rate and review. Your support really helps the show reach more people. And for that, I am truly grateful. Now let's dive in. Welcome to The Boy with Jeff Spikes. The show about achieving goals. Embracing growth and finding your true path. And now, here's your own. Hello and welcome to The Point. You're here and you're enthusiastically interested in how 2025 is going to start fresh and uh, active and already in the ideation of all the goals that you're wanting to reach. And that's the focus of how we transition. It's the focus of how you've learned through this uh, process of how to end a day, how to start a day while ending the other, how to transition from one thing to the next in a way that is powerful by increasing our level of intention. So welcome. And today is really exciting, right? You haven't had seen a lot of guests here on the point, And today we have amazing guests. So I'm here to welcome Rudy Dragoni, Lionel, Lionel Lamarque is how I say it. Is that right, Lionel? Lamarck. Okay. Lionel Lamarck and uh, Sebastian Medina. And four of us have come together with the ideas of results we're looking for to positively benefit and impact the world, impact you and your life and what, and, and really help you consider what the optimal version of you is and how to make that happen. And Rudy Dragoni has 30 plus years as a specialist and a, as a pharmacist and understanding, um, the hormone system and what supplements and um, other things, I'll let him speak to that, affect and benefit your sense of optimal and how you're feeling, thinking, and behaving based on your hormone level, how you're healing. Uh, Lionel is uh, the owner of Lion Strong, which is a both a gym in Miami and a process and also a training center and also a remote system and process that you can use to really think about your core, not in just your gut or your stomach or your strength, but really your posture and everything else and how all of the parts of you fit together physically that allow you to be optimal and overcome huge limitations from injuries and from just the way your body might be based on how you've held it forever. Right. So, um, and, and then Sebastian is a, uh, an absolute, I believe genius in, Uh, helping get messages out and understanding how tech meets marketing and messaging and creates amazing programs. He's worked for years in real estate and helped bring, uh, helped really just enhance people's lives and how they market and promote themselves. And he's working with us to help us and to, as part of the team to say, how do we better people's lives? We all have a great passion of wanting to be impactfully positive for you. So I'm going to, with that, we're in the zone of thinking and considering through what are we leaving in 2024 and how's that going to affect us in 2025? So I'm just going to let it roll and open it up. And um, Rudy, what are you leaving in 2024? What do you want to leave behind and put in your rear view mirror? And I I honestly, I I, I don't want to leave anything behind in 2024. Uh, I, 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 I want to move everything into 2025. Um, you were correct when you said that I have 30 years experience plus in working with hormones, but I want to bring that to the forefront of more people's lives. You know, just, just like, you know, doing this today is a way for us to be able to just get the information out there. And, um, to me, it's the most important thing that I've ever done. I changed my entire career. You know, I, I had a lot of stores. I was a businessman. I was an entrepreneur. But to me, it wasn't full as fulfilling 
as when I work with hormones and work with people and help them become the best part of themselves. Too many people have come to me and said, you know, if you can't help me, I don't know what I'm going to do. And and when when we do help them and they come back to us and say, you know, you've you've changed my life. You saved my life. I haven't felt this good in 30 years. I've never felt this good. These are the things that, you know, make me feel fulfilled. So so when you say to me, what do I want to leave behind in 2024? Nothing. You know, I want to bring everything forward. You know, I want to bring everything that I have to the attention to as many people as possible. And, and if we could all come together, you know, Sebastian with with his great ideas as far as, you know, bringing this to to all the markets and Lionel to bring in the physical as well as what we're I'm about healing from the inside out. And, and Lionel is going to be able to take us from the outside in. You know, and 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 I and I love that fact. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the more of these that we do, the more information that we'll give out to people. Um, so I'm going to start by saying, please, everyone, check your vitamin D level, because um, vitamin D is a hormone. And if I had to say to anyone, what is the first one that I would check is vitamin D level, and the doctors today say that 30 to 100 is good. I really recommend 60 to 80. Uh, no one with a vitamin D above 60 died of COVID. Uh, so it's, it's good to know that if we can increase our vitamin D, uh, that we have protect protection against viruses as well as helping against osteoporosis, as well as keeping other hormones in balance, and so on and so forth. So if, for the message for today's podcast is check your vitamin D levels. I love that. And That's all I'm going to leave it for now, and then we'll come back to something else once everybody else has gotten a chance to talk. I, I love that, Rudy. And and I'll, I'll what, what, something we can jump into it, it also as we keep this going around. First of all, how many of you out there really relate to that, right? So Rudy, like this idea of let's pull everything forward, right? Let's move everything forward. And one thing we can think about is I'm hearing you as far as what, you know, if, if some, if one of our, if one of you listeners, right, if we're talking to somebody, right, that, and they have a low, they have a low vitamin D level, you know, that's something that the listener is going to want to leave behind, right? Because we want them to start, we want to leave them behind the the lack of awareness of what that means and really walk into 2025 knowing it, right? And understanding that. So that's how I loop that into that topic. But at the same time, let's just for a second, think about the statement of, I want to bring everything forward and make a bigger impact. The level of passion and commitment is phenomenal. So I, I love that. Um, Let's go ahead under your direction and thought. Let's go ahead and kick off and go to Sebastian. And what are you thinking? Um, really, what, how how much vitamin D should someone take at minimum? And which food you need to you know eat on a regular basis to to have your vitamin D um, in place? Well, Very since uh, the, what what we should what we should do is number one, you should check it to see where you're at. OK, where your levels are. And like I said, the the range is, say, 30 to 100 is normal. I say no. I say the minimum 60, 80 is better. OK, once we get to that point. So if someone were to take vitamin D, a few things that they should know. Number one, it should be taken at night, not during the day. OK, uh, number two, if you, whatever your level is, if you want to get it up to 80, you could if you take 10,000 units at night with some kind of fat, because it is a fat soluble vitamin, like peanut butter or almond oil or any, even olive oil, a couple of teaspoons of olive oil, taking 10,000 units at night, at the end of a month, it'll probably go up about 15 points. So if you said to me, oh, I wanna bring it up to 75 and mine is 30, so you have to go up 45 points. Well, that means if you did 10,000 units at night, with a little bit of oil for three months, 15 plus 15 plus 15 gives you 45 plus 30, you're up to 75. 
you know, so that that's the easiest way to be able to calculate it. But at the end of the three months, you should be checked again to see where you're at. OK, you don't want it any higher than 100 because you might get bone spurs. But the value of getting your vitamin D up to that level is enormous, not only for young people, especially for young people, because most of the young people that have a problem with either dysmenorrhea or any type of PMS like symptoms is due to lack of vitamin D. OK, and anyone that, for instance, that is perimenopausal and they're starting to have symptoms as well, when you get their vitamin D up to that level, you stop having those problems and are able to push it back a few more years until you, you don't make any more hormones at all. So there's the benefits of vitamin D is incredible. OK, uh, and. This is the one I want to focus. That's that's the hormone I want to focus on today. Is there anybody who shouldn't do a do a vitamin D supplement? No, Other than because the vitamin, D, that if they're too high? vitamin D is necessary for everybody. If you're human, you need vitamin D. Awesome. And and the big problem, I say, there's another pandemic. When when we were younger, uh, when I was younger, the sunscreens were two, four, and six. Okay, and most people used baby oil, you know. And I was brought up in the Bronx, so. Tar Beach, everybody was up on, on the roof, you know, with the reflectors and, and, and baby oil. And, and now they're using sunscreens that are 70, you know, 100, 150. OK, and what that number means, OK, is if you burned in an hour normally, then you'd put on a six and you'll burn in six hours. So if you're taking 150, you would have to be in the sun, the same person, 150 hours straight. To be able to burn, it's it's ridiculous how much sunscreen they're putting on, and and if you look at the young kids, the the parents are, are spraying them like they're spraying a car, you know, and then they put long sleeves on them and a hat, and 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 the the children are not getting the good enough vitamin D, and they're going to have problems when they go into adolescence. So, I, I've heard that uh, above fifty, I think for sunscreens is almost useless. It's old marketing, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's all it's all marketing. And 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 I I'm against sunscreen. OK, I'm just saying, you know, if you're going to go out in the sun, OK, go out in the sun. If you get a good 20 to 40 minutes of the sun daily and if you feel like you've gotten too much, put on a shirt, you know, and, and, and stop that. You know, the, they used to use PABA, OK, which it has been known to be a carcinogen in, in high doses. So for me. I, I would not use sunscreen. I've never used sunscreen, okay? And I, and I don't plan to. Um, I, just, I just don't believe in it. I, I go out in the sun, and then when I, I feel a little, you know, that I have enough sun, I put on a shirt, you know, and, and that takes care of that. So. But this is incredible, right? So these are, these are the things that we have to look forward to in our collaborations of really digging into and understanding this stuff and getting a clearer picture and helping – helping people consider all the, the information so that they can make the decisions they want to make for themselves and then deal with that moving forward. Right. So, um, man, I had forgotten all that stuff about sunscreen and I, I, I use it and don't use it and use it and don't use it. But I love Sebastian. You're so action oriented. You're like, let's go right to it. Wait, I need to know more. <laughs> I want to know more about vitamin D. Let's dial this in. Well, um, I, I can I can go further, but I want to have everybody else have a turn, and and then yeah. Um, well, yeah. So, I, I, I want to add something Lionel. to that. I want to add something to that whole conversation. I mean, I think one of the you kind of alluded to it in talking about the sun and sunscreen, but you didn't really like go go deep into it. I think most people simply don't get enough sun exposure. Period. That's the number one reason why they're vitamin D deficient. If they actually just went out and got into the sun every day, they would they literally wouldn't need to supplement that much overnight. And if they just did that consistently, it didn't, and by consistently, it doesn't literally mean every single day. If they did this three, three to four times a week, that would be able to give their bodies everything that it needs to be able to function properly. But again, people are so afraid of the sun because of the marketing crap that's happened that they're literally putting a chemical shitstorm on their body, so to speak, to literally help create this whatever Right, thinking that they're protecting themselves when in reality they're doing more damage than good um, with utilizing sunscreens. I am a big, big like proponent against 
the use of sunscreen because I've seen the damages that it can actually create in children and in adults alike. So um, idea of, you know, putting these things on you to go out there makes no sense. You want to use something, use coconut oil or use baby oil or don't use anything at all, really, for that matter. Go out there, spend an hour or less and then come back in and then go back out and do that again a few times a day. And you'd be amazed at how you'd be able to feel great, get the benefits of, of the sunlight, get the benefits of the vitamin D that you would get from there without actually, you know, getting yourself burnt like crazy. You know, it's funny because I used to think I burn really easily, so I don't go in the sun, but man, every opportunity that I get, like one of the first things I get to do every day when I wake up, as soon as the sun comes out, as I step outside and I go stand with as little clothes as possible on, right? You know, with no shirt, you know, usually, and just kind of stand, arms extended, just open, just basking into that. I could try to stand out there for at least 20 minutes if I can, sometimes longer. And if I can't get that much in, I get whatever I can in and then go back and try to do that a few more times throughout the day. It doesn't take a lot to be able to make a difference, but if you do that consistently, you'd be amazed at um, how well your body would respond without actually having the need to use anything else. But if you're in a position or in a place where there's no sun and it's not available to you, then absolutely the protocol that Rudy recommends is the next way to go to make sure that your vitamin D levels are where they need to be so that you can function properly. It's interesting because there's this, there's this struggle in, in the general, right, about skin care and not wanting age spots or not wanting you know, all the things we don't want from our skin as far as appearance and the fight against aging or whatever we're talking about and the use of different products and the need for properly having a hydrated skin and a hydrated body, not just moisturizing and all those things. And when I surf or when I'm out in the ocean or kayaking or doing anything, I wear long sleeve shirts, but there's times during the day that I'll soak up the sun, like what you're talking about, but because I didn't want to keep putting things on, but then I have that thing with my neck, right? So I'm thinking, what do you do about the areas of your face, your neck that you can't expose, but you want to be in the sun all day, but you also don't want to look like, you know, wrinkly leather in, 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 when we, as we age, right? How do we combat that? Well, if I, if I can interject here, Lionel, if you don't mind. Yeah, I don't um, mind at all. I want to just add a few things to what you said. Um, interestingly enough, when we look at the hormonal situation, especially for young women, you have a certain amount of estrogen that is being made during the month and a certain amount of progesterone. And it's a yin and yang, and they're supposed to be in balance. The problem is that vitamin D helps progesterone do its job. So if you don't have enough vitamin D, progesterone doesn't do its job. So it's like the yin and the yang is one is yin and half of yang, in which case you get all the PMS-like symptoms. And then these young girls tell their mothers they have, they're suffering so badly, the mother brings them into a doctor and the doctor puts them on birth control pills. And so I'm against birth control pills. I, all they really needed was vitamin D getting it up to where they wanted to do. And, and as far as you're saying, you know, going to the sun every day, don't take the supplements. If I had my way, that's 100% correct. That is 100% correct. If we can get everybody out into the sun, do not take my protocols as what should be done. What should be done is get into the sun. If you can get into the sun and you can get your vitamin D up naturally, God bless you. If you can't, for whatever reason, mine is just there as an alternative, okay? But, but if you ask me, what would I prefer? What do I do? You look at my skin and you can see that I, I'm in Arizona. I'm on, on in the sun all the time, okay? I, I, I don't take vitamin D unless it dips down below 60, okay? And that's when, I, when I'm doing too many things inside and not enough things outside. But 100%, get it from the sun if you can. You look great, by the way. I mean, because I, I don't see the age spots and all that other stuff. And you're probably not even that old to have to be able to have that. <laughs> well, so he, here's, here's, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, no, you don't this, is, this is what I wanted to address, right? Because the idea of, okay, well, hey, let me go cover everything so I don't get the sun spots and the age spots. What you guys are failing to realize is that the sun is actually there to do the opposite of what you think is going to do. Being exposed to the sun is not what's going to make you age faster. That's actually going to help you stay longer. Because again, if your levels are correct and your hormones are absolutely in balance, you are not going to quote unquote age, you know, faster because of it. You're not going to get sunspots or age spots or anything like that. That is again all part of the whole marketing thing to get you to buy all this crap to quote unquote take care of something that's really not a problem. 
if you, if you look around the rest of the world, right, and look at places, man, where sun exposure is normal for people on an everyday basis, you don't see anyone aging rapidly. If anything, it's the exact opposite. You meet someone that's in their 80s and 90s, and they look like they're in their 30s or 40s, and you're like, how is this possible? And it's not an anomaly. That's the norm. That's literally how most people are. Well, Except I'm with you that. come here to where we are, and then you see all the different things that we're doing to quote unquote protect ourselves from the one thing that's actually there to make us better. And then we wonder why we suffer and why we have all these other issues that are attached to that. Well, and I'm with that, other than if you're, especially if you haven't been in the sun all, all winter and then you come out in the summer and then you burn, right? So, so, so the, or the, like I'm talking about, the back of my neck will burn. Now, eventually it'll get dark enough. So you're saying if I, so, so there's that piece right and i think that's where people get stuck in what's really the best way to move forward and in that it's probably everyone's experimenting so they're trying all the different things right but it's still not good for our skin to burn right it hurts it's it's let me interject on two two points that you guys have made number one if you have a sensitive area for because of previous exposure or previous damage okay then you should put some sunscreen on that spot that area okay so that if if whatever for whatever reasons i know someone that has had herpes in their face okay and every time they go into the sun they have a flare of the herpes so i would say to them no you put on sunscreen even zinc oxide to block it 100 percent. okay i don't have a problem with that but as far as the age spots are concerned age spots brown spots that you have are glycosylated proteins those glycosylated proteins are circulating through your body because the liver is overburdened and people need liver cleansing. Now, if you have them circulating and the UV light hits it, you'll turn into those brown spots. But the brown spots are just a form of diagnosing that your liver needs cleansing and that you've done something in the past that has caused you to have an overburden. OK, and so one I've had many patients in their 70s and 80s, once we've cleaned their liver, that the brown spots that they have on their arms all disappeared. OK, and whether it's being worked with milk thistle or milk thistle with a laxative or coffee enemas or colonics or whatever it is that you do to be able to help remove the the toxins that you have in your body so that your liver can function better and be able to address those glycosylated proteins. In which case, then being in the sun won't bother you. That's incredible. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is just, uh, this is an amazing conversation. Um, <clears throat> li let, let's jump into something, Lionel. Um, let's take it right to the point of what, you know, I asked Rudy this question, like, what are you going to leave behind in 2024? And what do you want instead in 2025? And I, let's keep it restricted. I, I don't want to restrict you, honestly. So you say what you want to say, but I probably can't restrict you anyway. But for real, like, let's think about um, what do you, like, in what you do, right? You have had miracle results with people. If it, Go to Lion Strong on Instagram and watch what Lionel does with people. He, he, you'll, you have to see it for yourself, right? People who can't move, who have such limited mobility, that are all of a sudden incredibly mobile and having a huge move in their life just based on how they posture themselves and the things, the movements that they do with or without weights, with body weight or with additional tools and how creative they, and, and how that strengthens them and changes their life. Like, so in relationship to that and what we're doing here, talk to us, man, <laughs> lay it out. Oh, no, that's, that's a very interesting question. What do I want to leave behind in 2024 going into 2025? If anything, what I want to leave behind is the lack of knowledge that people have about what their bodies are capable of. We can do some incredible things and we can make some incredible changes to the way people actually function, regardless of issues that they've had in the past. If they simply just learn a few basic things about movement, about how to engage muscles that they don't even realize they don't use, and really get them strong enough to be able to make some things happen. So for me, it's really a big thing about getting that knowledge out into the world and get people to realize that as a human being, you were designed to do some incredible things with that body of yours. Whether you've ever had that experience or not is a different story. Most people, unfortunately, have never been exposed to an area where they've gotten to figure out and find out what their bodies can do. 
And then I meet them in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s sometimes, and they think, oh, well, it's too late for me because, you know, I'm old. I can't do anything. Maybe when I was 20 years old, I could have done that. And what's surprising for them, anywhere from within a couple of months, or actually from within a couple of weeks or a few months, they see themselves doing things that they couldn't do when they were 20 and 30 years old. And they're absolutely like amazed at that. But what's so exciting for me is to watch them continue on two, three, four, five, ten 10 years later and get continually better as they age. So proving again that the adage that we've had about once you hit your 30s or 40s, you start to like the decline because people think middle age is in your 40s. Are you kidding me? You're just getting started. How could that be middle age? That's, that makes absolutely no sense. You're not over the hill in any way, shape, or form. You are literally the beginning of everything that you're supposed to be capable of. So it is so much fun for me to see people in their 70s, 80s, 90s, doing things that people in their 20s are struggling to do. And then they're looking at them wondering, how is that possible? Because people around me can't do that. It's not that they can't. It's just, it's just never been exposed to the right protocol to help them do that. So for me, going into 2025, I want to be able to see the rest of the world get exposed to that, you know, knowledge and get access to information that's actually going to help them be better. Look, I always say this about the fitness industry. I love and hate the industry at the same time. I love it because it's there to be able to provide something positive for people to step in, learn about their bodies and do some great things and move forward and, you know, get better, stay healthy longer, et cetera. That's a great thing that is there for. What I hate about it though, is that most people in it have absolutely no clue how to do that because they've never taken the time to learn. They've simply regurgitated the same information that they've been taught by others in front of them without ever questioning anything, which is part of what I see also wrong with the whole medical system. It's not there necessarily to make people better. It's there to fix issues, I guess, kind of, sort of, but not really make you healthy. And people have forgotten that. And so there's some that are going back to that now that are actually going back trying to revamp that. But as a whole, the system isn't there to help people get better. And that's the part that I really, truly want to change. I know that I'm not the only one out there that's on that path, right? That really want to be able to help people on completely change and improve what they do. But man, it is so much fun for me to see someone come in with limitations, restrictions, problems, surgeries, whatever, you know, tell me that they can't do something physically with their bodies. And then watch that person over a few weeks to a few months completely change and see them capable of doing things that in their minds were absolutely impossible. There is nothing more rewarding than that to me to be able to see that happen and knowing that, okay, cool. Now that person's life is completely different than it's ever been. And he's going to completely continue getting better because now they have the ability, not just, and so we understand this isn't a gym thing. This is literally giving people regain and re control of their lives again. They're now capable of physically doing things that were impossible. So if they couldn't play with their kids or their grandchildren, because they couldn't get that on the floor and get back up, they now have the ability not only to do that, but to do things with their kids that were impossible before. And That's it goes so much further than that. And it applies to what I've seen with what we do with them physically, that translates to literally every other area of their lives, not just, you know, gym thing. I mean, like life period gets better. And I love that. I love the ability to do that. It's a huge thing. And, and just looking at your promotions when you're not, they're not even promotions, looking at your Instagram, and the true stories of things that are happening for people speaks volumes to it. You know, it's, it's just absolutely incredible um, to watch what happens. I mean, you know, Isaac or what's the woman's name most recently that I've just fallen in love with or her, her energy and her spirit. Astrid is amazing when she first got there. Right. And seeing her now. So anyone checking this out, go look at it. It's lion strong is the get lion strong. And it's a, uh, <clears throat> It's incredible. There's real life stories of how people are uh, like to your point, able to play with their kids again, that like they couldn't before ride a motorcycle, um, whatever it is that they want to do that they couldn't do before they're able to find a way to get there. And it's amazing. So, all right, Sebastian, really, really quickly, um, or not even really quick, just, just roll into this, man. What do you want in 2025? What do you, you know, and, and if there's something you want to leave behind in 24, like what, where are you at with this energy and this conversation? <laughs> um, I'm trying to, I've been trying to think that, um, 
I guess that I, what I want to leave in 2024 is smaller numbers. I, I want 2025 to be impact, to be big, to be able to get all these things that I know and the people that I know together and bring them to well, everyone that we can. Everyone. Like, I want this information to reach thousands, if not millions of people. That's my mission for 2025. Um, I also love the advancements that AI is, is right now um, having. I know there is a little um, also threats that, are, that comes with that, but um, we're really looking forward on how the scientists and data scientists are developing these machines to be able to, re re you know, to think like us, to to help us, because it's not going to, in my opinion, it's not replacing what we are doing. It's empowering us to achieve more. And that's how I see AI too. So that's kind of what, what I, I'm looking forward to for 2025. I love that. And you're, I would call you an expert at that. Now it's, um, and you know, something funny, right? The human part of this is never leaving us, right? I, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but did you know that AI programmers have a name for what happens when AI makes an incorrect assumption from everything it's reading and then says something that's wrong. Do you guys know what that is? No, they, they call it a hallucination. Yeah. Right. So AI has hallucinations and <laughs> we could have a lot of fun with that, but, but the reality is, is that AI has, uh, has, um, it's not always right. And sure in the future, it might get a lot more correct or accurate or right or whatever you want to call that. The idea is, is that, we're here on the cusp of what matters most to keep people, to keep the human side of everything relevant and to combat the negatives, right? And I call that, and, I, and I've been taught, we've been talking about that as far as this, this human piece of it, where it's automation, right? It's automating and bringing the unconscious into the conscious realm, right? Jung years ago said that the process of individuation is bringing the unconscious into the conscious. So now there's a lot more science and we know a lot more about how to work between our conscious and unconscious selves, but we got to get optimal. Our physiology needs to be right. We're with Rudy, right? We have to really know what we're doing and, and not just like Rudy, you have a thing about, it's not that you just want to tell everyone what to do. You want to teach and medical professionals and coaches and individuals and anyone of how to help someone understand the best of themselves, right? It's not about just being the expert and giving someone an answer. It's being the experience and allowing people to have what they need to make their best decisions and be present with people while they learn to automate, right? Human automation intelligence is the answer to, audit, to, to uh, artificial intelligence. And how we're going to mirror those and marry those and work with those is how we're going to take all of this to the next level. Now, that's an opinion base, but um, we're going to wrap here in a few minutes. Rudy's got a patient, but let's open this up just to go around again. And, um, you know, if I could, I'd like to give a, a, a closing uh, statement um, and, and an answer for um what Lionel was talking about. It's it's so funny because doing the work and getting the, the results from being mind body and being able to um, it, achieve things that you haven't been able to achieve, that work actually changes your hormones inside of your body. That peace of mind to be able to find a quiet space and to be able to reflect and to get your mind to calm down, that affects the hormones in your body. The, the, your true age is not how long it's been since you've left your mother's womb. Your true age is how high your hormones are. The human body is broken down and rebuilt over 90% of it over a three-year period. But it's like if you had a drop ceiling and you went to work where there's this drop ceiling and it has a hundred tiles on it. And every day before you came into work, somebody came in and removed that tile. At the you wouldn't notice it, but at the end of a hundred days, you would have a completely new ceiling. It's the same thing with the body. 
So you look at what Lionel is doing, and he's being able to not only have people achieve the physicality, but because of being able to feel good about themselves and bring that positive energy into themselves, that affects their hormone levels. OK, and increasing the hormones. So when you say to me, I see a guy in his 70s that looks like his 30s, I'll look at it and say, let's do a hormone test on that person. And we're going to see that that person's hormones are that of a person of in their 30s. And therefore, their body is being rebuilt in that way. If it can be achieved for some of those people, by all means, any time you can do it without any medical intervention, doing it, you know, by praying. For some people, that's what it takes, okay? By all means, that's the way to do it. But if you can't, and, and, and for whatever reason, you have not, you've tried it and you haven't been able to achieve it, not because the system doesn't work, but rather because you have too many external forces that are pulling apart that system. You're working too hard. You have a, a large family that you have to take care of. The stresses of everyday life that you can't separate yourself from, to be able to find that quiet space, and then as an alternative, okay, we say supplement with the hormones for a while. Maybe you can get to that space, or if you can't, for whatever reason, where there has been damage that has been caused to certain glands, then you need su supplementation for a longer period of time. And, and that's my closing statement. That's an amazing. Thank you, Rudy. That's a beautiful closing statement. Um, I love that. How about Sebastian? You want to kick in and how would you end this? I, would, I was thinking of what Leonel was saying about um, the medical industry not, not really, you know, getting to the roots of the problem of the people. And that's something that, um, that really, really concerns me. It's, it's like they were in the, in the disease business, not in the health business, right? <laughs> They're taking more, um, you know, the the high level symptoms, but not the root of the problem problems. And, um, I think that's, that's how I close. Also just a cute, quick anecdote. Just today I was playing with my kid, uh, last night and I, I quickly trained the last version of, of chat GPT to the, the one that has the advanced voice and it, and it explained how my kid was, how old was he and to start interacting with him, tell him stories, to, to asking how what he's doing, and they had a chat. <laughs> like my kid actually gave him a nickname, which is Planet, because they, 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 how the user interface is like a like a blue planet, and and he calls him Planet, and now it's playing with it like a friend for him, and it's mind boggling for me that. That could be the future now, you know. I prefer my kid to be playing with ChatGPT and telling the stories than you know, being him plotting a TV show or something, right? In my opinion, that's uh, a little bit more more engagement, more engaging for him. Um, and it's just a quick, quick thing that it, you know, I I, I think it's funny <laughs> that we're at that level right now. It's certainly more interactive than a television show, that's for sure, right? <clears throat> that's amazing. How about you, Lionel? Or were you done? Or are you complete there? Oh Sebastian? no! I mean, there's there's so many things that we can go into. Obviously, you know. So I mean, we we're limited in terms of time, right? But I mean, we could spend so much time going over so many different things. But I will just kind of add, you know, to what everyone has shared already. Um, Rudy made an excellent point when he kind of went and spoke on, um, you know, the the fact that people should be trying this naturally, and, and I'm a firm believer of that. I really believe that. As a whole, if there are people focused on two main things that could help solve the majority of problems that they have, right? That's the way that they move and what they do with their physical bodies and actually are learning to connect in a way that they've never done before. And then, of course, what they put in their mouths on a regular basis. Those two things can impact everything in a great way. But I'm also a big proponent that if that's not enough and it's not getting you there, absolutely you need to learn what and how to do to enhance your hormonal balance so that you can function at an optimum level all the time. So I love what Rudy brings to the table because he brings a set of knowledge about those things that most people don't know. There are a ton of quote unquote clinics out there that are there to provide hormone replacement therapy. That's great and all, but the problem is most people seriously don't know what they need and why. They just go in and they talk about the big three and that's usually all that people focus on, not realizing that there's so much more to that conversation than just that. 
And so taking the time to learn and understand what you're eating, how it's affecting you, what's happening in your levels, getting really to know all the other ones that are absolutely important, like what really does, you know, with, with this panel makes a huge difference. And then just learning what to apply and how, and I've always said this, and this has been my big contention with most people when they go into that HRT type situation, they literally embark on this and for them is for the rest of their lives. And I'm always saying why. You may not need that. You may need it for a little while, but you shouldn't have to need that forever. Now, granted, if you pass the point where you've done so much damage to your body without knowing, you know, that you no longer can produce things on your own, then absolutely that is necessary for you to survive and live. By all means, go for it. But for most people, they're not there. They're not even close to being there. And they don't know that. Simply learning and understanding the differences will make such a huge impact because it'll help them fill in the gaps where they need to just as long as they need to for their bodies to not take over and continue doing that on its own. And I think that's a fantastic thing. So I'm really excited about where we're going with this and how we're going to be able to make an even bigger impact on that industry than we were before. So, I, And especially for a person that does a lot of physicality like Lionel, I give this example when I give lectures. I say, I go, think, take a look at your arm, okay? If I take this arm and I tie it up so that I can't use it for six months, all the muscles will atrophy. Now, even though this arm may be a half the size of the other arm, if I take the, the uh, I untie it and start working it out over time, I can regain that arm to be exactly like the other arm. Okay. And that means that if you haven't done it for a long period of time, but you start, you can regain what you had, which is exactly Lionel's point. The, the other point is if you cut off the arm, mm -hmm. then there's nothing I can do. Once right. the arm is cut off, you need the synthetic help to be able to get a prosthetic arm. And, and so the hormones, when you've done too much damage, okay, can be an adjunct to some people. But remember, uh, one of the things that I advocate is something that I call a hormonal vacation, which is some people that if you took them on vacation and took care of everything for them, they will regain their adrenals. They will regain all the hormones that they had because that they've been devoid of stress. Well, we can do the same thing and it takes six to eight weeks to get that person that same a boost or a head start to be able to help them. That's incredible. <clears throat> yeah, that's incredible. That's wonderful. So, so let, we're going to wrap here. And I, I think I, I want to thank each of you for being here. I, I'm serious. This is, this is phenomenal. I am overwhelmed with gratitude right now. Um, to a, it, it's, it's beautiful what happens when, you know, we come together and I, so I'm, I'm just really grateful for the conversation and, you know, we're, <clears throat> we're what, what I want to leave behind in 2024 is isolation. And I, I want to leave the idea and, and I want to move forward in 2025 with the idea that collaboration is where it's at, right? Collaboration is what we want and collaboration with the right information is important. And it's, uh, you know, the commitment that to, that we have to start to, to keep having these conversations and to re just to, to really move forward with the, uh, what we, what we already have working with grateful and fit now and other communities to start having these conversations. Cause here at the point, the point is you, right? The point is that you are your own best expert. You are your own genius. Nobody can be better than you, but you They're better at being you than you. And you have a better chance. You, it almost don't have a chance if you're not considering the holistic view of how optimal you can be and how optimal you are. And to do that, we have to clear out. It's important. So the other thing in that, in when we leave isolation and we gain openness and when we, and we gain collaboration, what we gain is the opportunity to unwind and unwrap and, and let fall off the concepts that are keeping us limited the things we bought into and believe that may not be true. And if you're a healthcare professional and I work with you, or even if I haven't met you yet, you are not healthcare. You are the people, you're the humans inside of healthcare 
wanting to make a difference and wanting to help people get better and wanting to heal them. And some of you are doing a job and you're doing what you were trained and what you were taught. And that, that doesn't mean that you are the system that is doing that. And the truth is, is that many of you out there have a reality of what it feels like and looks like to be a recipient of the healthcare process that we have today. Everyone has their own relationship to that. But if you're in healthcare and you're in a human inside of healthcare, you're an individual, you are the solution. You are part of that solution and how you move forward and your heart and your spirit to want to change is not what, what anyone's talking about when it comes to the idea that of how broken we feel healthcare is or that many people feel it is. We all need to collaborate. Every, all, of, all of you out there need to come to the table. And the more who do, and the more we bring what's in the unconscious into the conscious, the more we get our bodies more optimal in how we're working and back to natural. And the more we learn to move and do these things, the, the more optimal we can be. And there's no risk then that AI can take us over. Maybe there's some for real conspiracy theorists. But the point here is you and... I appreciate you and Rudy and Lionel and Sebastian, you are brothers <laughs> in, in my heart. And, um, I'm, thank you for bringing yourself here and sharing openly. I look, we look forward to a ton more of these conversations as we open these doors to help people and get this, get these messages out and support people and being their best. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Blessings to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of The Point with me, Jeff Spikes. Please visit jeffspikes.com for everything you would need to know to engage with me offline. And lastly, thank you for your time, your attention, and your consideration. This is The Point. The show about